quite a pivotal year um, when I was working in the KISS office because basically basically the the powers that be told us that they were going to be announcing some new radio licenses London wide radio licenses but people applying for those licenses couldn't be pirates so if a pirate wanted to apply for one of these licenses a pirate would have to come off air right so there was a, a year probably the weirdest year of my life 1989 the year before we got the radio license and we had to come off air and we had to be a radio station without being on air so we had to be a radio station without being a radio station so we did everything possible to keep the name of KISS FM afloat we we launched a magazine called free which was free it was paid for by advertising and it was just full of news about KISS FM it was full of news about everything else music clubs shops and everything but it was our way of, of keeping people abreast of what was going on with KISS and we used to give these magazines out just drop them in record shops clubs wherever and you know just so that we could keep the flow of information going we used to do record fairs in order to raise money we did club nights of course to raise money we just did everything possible just to keep the, the name of KISS afloat did everything but broadcast and it was a really weird year because out, out of sight out of mind I mean people were like who, who are you you know how can you beat KISS FM when you're not on air so it was a weird year and there was a lot of skepticism but um, you know eventually we got the license and we were able to come on air free magazine became touch magazine and we ran touch from inside KISS initially there were some editorial guys who took over the running of it and then later on touch came out of the KISS well, organization whenever there's success there is clones yeah so do you feel that that's happening with the music today well when I joined the industry in 1981 and it was a real struggle to, to kind of be sitting here now and to see the way British black music is I mean 2010 2009 they were just absolutely unbelievable years I mean it was just just nothing but British black music artists it was like Dizzy Rascal, Tiny Temper, Teo Cruz, Tinchy Strider, N Dubs, just hit after hit after hit. And I, I just, not, not just top 40 hits, we're talking number ones, number one hit records. So sitting here now, it's, it's a, a joyous day that, you know, these acts can get. Uh, as high as they're getting but the downside of that is that everybody wants a piece and there are a lot of tiny clones a lot of tinchy clones a lot of Teo clones we've got n-dubs clones you know dizzy clones everybody um, everybody is just replicating the formula and there are some intelligent people in some record companies one or two and there are some who are like oh my god we better get on of this we better get on this uh, gravy train as quickly as possible it's like wow you're, you're black and you rap uh, sign this piece sign this piece of paper you know it's like you know come and come and be part of our record label it's like oh my god some, some people never learn and also saying that like, music is it goes in cycles so even though it is doing well now the urban music it will probably revert back to like the guitar absolutely and... absolutely you know pop music is 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 cyclical and and right now capital kiss choice 
are, are virtually all the same. Uh, they virtually sound the same. They're all playing, they've got the same tone, they've got the same, you know, the pop acts sound like the urban acts. So if you mix the pop acts and the urban acts, it's, it's you know, it's, it's just one really seamless, and they're all the same tempo as well, which is very, very funny. So um, at the moment, urban music, urban music is absolutely ruling the roost but it can't stay like this forever and it will change uh, it'll go to guitar bands or it might go to pop or it might go to singer songwriters or it might go to you know Adele, Adele type artists I mean you are ready for a lot of Adele clones aren't you because that's that's, co that's coming soon yeah. you know the Adele clones are coming. Sounds like a, a horror movie, but you know, the Adele clones are coming. Um, and it, yeah, things will change. And maybe in five, six years time, it'll come back to urban music, who knows? But um, I don't know, it's a part of me, part of me is kind of hoping that it, it changes soon, because then the pop acts will go back to making pop music. And then the urban acts will go back to making their... And then, and then it'll just be, you know, urban acts making urban music, and then the pop acts will go back to making pop music. Everything seems to be really, like, crossed <laughs> over now, isn't it? It's like... It's like... I don't know, it's... It's, it's, it just doesn't feel healthy. <laughs> it's almost... It's just unhealthy. It's unhealthy. It's like, yeah, I, I know you're a pop act and you want to be cool, so you're figuring... You're figuring you'll make urban music and you'll be cool and you'll get Kanye West to rap on your tune or Snoop Dogg or whatever, or you, or you get Tiny Temper in and you know, and you know you, you you're loving that credibility, but it's kind of, it's just it's not healthy. But that must be probably from the the powers that be who will be saying, look, this plus this equals that. Well, yeah, I mean it's it's. It's, it's A and R people, basically, sort of saying to their artists, you know, you're not selling enough. Let's look at the popular artists. Can you please sound more like the popular artists? We got a video this week from a um, from a kind of female pop artist, and she's completely abandoned her sound, and she now sounds like Rihanna. Okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay? Yeah. And w we received this video this week and we've spent the whole week just laughing, alright? Because she no longer sounds like the way she used to. She sounds like Harry Belafonte singing the Banana Boat song, alright? And it's really weird. She sounds just like Rihanna in What's Her, What's Her Name? And it's like, oh my god, how embarrassing. And it's very obvious. <laughs> How embarrassing! You completely ditched your sound to copy Rihanna's sound. Was that your decision, or was that some executive somewhere?